you're probably thinking AI is all about those massive models getting bigger and more expensive, right? Well, I've been diving deep into this week's AI news, and what I found completely flipped that assumption on its head. A tiny model with just 7 million parameters is now outperforming GPT-4 on certain tasks. Yeah, you heard that right. 7 million versus hundreds of billions. And that's just the beginning of what's happening this week. Welcome back to bitbias.ai, where we do the research so you don't have to. Join our community of AI enthusiasts. Click the newsletter link in the description for weekly analysis delivered straight to your inbox. So in this video, we're breaking down seven major AI developments that dropped this week. And trust me, some of these are going to change how you think about AI completely. We're talking about enterprise AI going mainstream, chat GPT becoming more accessible than ever, and even brain-computer interfaces controlling devices with just your thoughts. By the end of this video, you'll understand exactly what these developments mean for you, whether you're a creator, a business owner, or just someone trying to keep up with this rapidly evolving space. Let's start with the biggest enterprise play we've seen all year. Google's Gemini Enterprise. Google just made a massive move in the enterprise AI space, and it's one that's going to make Microsoft seriously nervous. They've launched Gemini Enterprise, and here's why this matters more than just another AI announcement. Think about how your company currently works. You've got data scattered across Salesforce, SAP, Microsoft 365, maybe Google Workspace. Usually, connecting all these systems requires developers, custom code, and weeks of implementation time. Gemini Enterprise changes that entire equation. This is a no-code AI platform that lets organizations automate workflows, deploy intelligent agents, and generate insights across departments without writing a single line of code. But here's where it gets interesting. Google isn't just offering another chatbot for enterprises. They're combining their internal powerhouse tools, Code Assist and Deep Research, into a seamless automation environment. Marketing teams can pull data and generate reports in real time. Finance departments can create predictive analytics on the fly. HR can automate repetitive workflows instantly. And the results are already speaking for themselves. Early partners like Figma, Klarna, Mercedes-Benz, and Virgin Voyages are reporting something pretty remarkable. Teams are completing days of work in just hours. That's not incremental improvement. That's transformational productivity. What makes this particularly significant is the timing. Microsoft's Copilot suite has been dominating the enterprise conversation, but analysts are now saying Google's approach of blending creative generation with operational intelligence might actually be the better model. This could become a cornerstone of corporate AI adoption moving forward. The enterprise AI war just got a whole lot more competitive. Samsung's tiny recursion model. Now remember that assumption I mentioned at the start about AI models needing to be massive? Samsung just shattered that completely, and the implications are honestly mind-blowing. They've unveiled something called the Tiny Recursion Model, or TRM, and the numbers here are staggering. We're talking about a neural network with just 7 million parameters that's outperforming GPT-4 on select reasoning benchmarks. To put that in perspective, that's like having a compact car outrace a Formula One vehicle on certain tracks. It shouldn't be possible, but it is. Here's the genius behind it. Instead of the bigger is always better approach that's dominated AI development, TRM uses something called recursive reasoning. Think of it like this. Rather than having a massive brain that knows everything up front, you have a smaller, more efficient brain that thinks through problems multiple times, refining its answer with each pass. It's doing multiple logical passes, improving accuracy without expanding the model size. The woman behind this breakthrough, Alexia Jolicure Martineau, might have just triggered a paradigm shift in AI design. Because if you can get GPT-4 level reasoning with a fraction of the energy and hardware resources, everything changes. Suddenly, powerful AI on your phone or embedded in your car becomes not just possible, but practical. Samsung claims TRM delivers comparable results to GPT-4 on math and logic tests 
while using a tiny fraction of the energy. And they're already working on integrating it into their devices for on-device intelligent reasoning. No cloud needed. No massive data centers burning through electricity. This challenges the entire narrative we've been told about AI development. Maybe the future isn't about who can build the biggest model. Maybe it's about who can build the smartest one. And South Korea just put itself at the forefront of that race. ChatGPT Go Expansion While we're talking about accessibility, OpenAI just made a move that could completely reshape the global AI landscape, and it's happening right now across Asia. They've expanded ChatGPT Go, their low-cost plan, to 16 additional Asian countries. We're talking India, Pakistan, Indonesia, Thailand, the Philippines, and more. And here's why this is such a strategic play. The plan costs under $5 a month. Think about what that means. These are regions with massive smartphone adoption, but where a $20 monthly subscription has been a real barrier. OpenAI is bringing GPT-4 level performance, image generation, and custom instructions to users who were previously priced out of premium AI tools. But wait until you see the bigger picture here. Asia is where the real AI competition is heating up. You've got local startups like Zipu AI and Baidu's Ernie Bot fighting for market share. OpenAI needed to make this move to cement ChatGPT's dominance in what's becoming the fastest growing AI ecosystem on the planet. And there's a brilliant secondary benefit that people aren't talking about enough. By expanding into these markets, OpenAI isn't just gaining users. They're gaining incredibly valuable cultural and linguistic data. This diversity will make their models better for everyone. They're introducing language support and region-specific payment options, making this feel less like American tech imperialism and more like genuine global accessibility. For students, freelancers, and small businesses across Asia, this could be transformative. We're talking about ChatGPT shifting from being a luxury product to an everyday productivity tool. That's how you build long-term dominance, by making your technology accessible when it matters most. Dia Browser Launch Speaking of transformative technology, there's a browser war happening right now, and most people don't even realize it yet. Dia, the AI-powered browser from the browser company, the same folks who created Arc, just opened to all Mac users. And this isn't just Chrome with a chatbot slapped on the side. This is a complete reimagining of what a browser can be. Here's what caught my attention. Dia lets you interact with the web instead of just surfing it. The browser has built-in AI chat, memory, and task automation. You can build what they call skills that connect apps and websites or create personal workflows, and you don't need any extensions or extra tools. The free version includes AI, features like summarization and skill customization which is already pretty impressive. But the pro plan at $20 a month offers unlimited usage and advanced automation. The AI is embedded directly into tabs, sidebars, and navigation bars, turning web navigation into an intelligent, conversational experience. And this next part will surprise you. The browser company just secured a $610 million acquisition backing. That's serious money and it's giving Dia the firepower to genuinely challenge Chrome and Edge. What we're seeing here is part of a bigger trend toward AI-native browsers that act as digital assistants. Instead of you doing the work of finding, clicking, and managing information, the browser starts doing that for you. It's the difference between having a map and having a guide. Both get you there, but one makes the journey a whole lot easier. Beyond headlines transition. Now those are the major platform plays and product launches. But here's where things get really fascinating and honestly a bit unsettling. Let's talk about what's happening at the cutting edge where AI is pushing into territories that were science fiction just a few years ago. Neuralink breakthrough. Elon Musk's Neuralink just revealed something that made me stop and think about where we're actually headed with this technology. They've showcased users controlling digital gestures and external devices purely through thought. No hands, no voice commands. Just thinking about moving a cursor, and it moves. 
The system translates neural activity into precise commands. We're talking cursor movement, scrolling, selection on screens, all controlled by brain signals. And while that might sound like party trick territory, the real-world implications are profound. Neuralink says this moves them closer to practical applications for people with paralysis. Imagine someone who's lost the ability to move their limbs being able to communicate, browse the web, control their environment, all restored through a brain-computer interface. That's not science fiction anymore. That's getting close to reality. What we're witnessing is the growing viability of BCIs in medical and assistive technology. This is a genuine step towards seamlessly connecting the human brain with external systems for everyday use and accessibility. The ethical questions are enormous, sure, but so is the potential to restore independence and quality of life to people who've lost it. AI-directed film. From connecting brains to machines, let's talk about machines making art and why the internet absolutely cannot agree on whether that's amazing or terrifying. A teaser just dropped for what's being called the first feature film entirely directed by an AI agent, and social media is having a full-scale debate about it. The film imagines a future where 99% of jobs are automated, which is ironically the exact conversation we're having in real life about AI's impact on creativity. The divide is fascinating. Supporters are calling it a revolutionary experiment in storytelling. They see potential for new narrative structures, visual styles that humans might never conceive, and a genuine expansion of what cinema can be. Critics, on the other hand, argue that this strips away the human essence of filmmaking. That what makes art meaningful is the human experience, emotion, and perspective behind it. The teaser's hyper-real visuals and AI-scripted dialogue are technically impressive, but they're raising the bigger question. Can AI truly replace or even enhance human direction in cinema? Or is something fundamental lost when you remove human creative vision from the process? This isn't just an academic debate. It's a preview of conversations that are going to dominate the creative industries in the coming years. Because whether we like it or not, this technology exists now, and creators are going to use it. Mr. Beast warning. And speaking of creators, one of the biggest voices on YouTube just issued a warning that everyone in the creative economy needs to hear. Mr. Beast recently voiced serious concerns about the rise of AI-generated videos, calling it scary times for creators. In response to models like OpenAI's Sora, he asked a question that cuts right to the heart of the issue. What happens when AI videos are just as good as normal videos? It's not a hypothetical anymore. AI-generated entertainment is flooding social media. Synthetic influencers are gaining millions of followers. Deep fake clips are blurring the lines of authenticity to the point where viewers can't always tell what's real. Mr. Beast's comments echo growing anxiety across the entire creator economy. When automation can produce content that's indistinguishable from human-created work, what happens to originality? What happens to income for creators who've spent years building their skills and audiences? Here's what hit me about his statement. He acknowledged AI's creative potential. He's not saying the technology is inherently bad, but he warned that unchecked adoption could break trust between audiences and authentic creators and trust is literally the foundation of the creator economy. Without it, the entire model collapses. The question isn't whether AI tools will be used in content creation. They already are. The question is how we maintain authenticity, transparency, and that human connection that makes content meaningful in the first place. So there you have it. Seven AI developments from this week alone, and each one is pushing us into new territory. We've got Enterprise AI going mainstream with Google's Gemini Enterprise. We've got Samsung proving that smaller, smarter models might beat bigger ones. OpenAI is democratizing access across Asia. New AI browsers are changing how we interact with the web. Brain-computer interfaces are becoming real. AI is directing films. And creators are warning us about the authenticity crisis that's coming. The pace of change here is genuinely unprecedented. 
what's launching this week would have been considered impossible just a year ago. And honestly, we're probably going to look back at this moment and realize we were standing at the beginning of something massive. If you found this breakdown valuable, let me know in the comments which story surprised you most. Are you excited about these developments or does something here concern you? I read every comment and I'm genuinely curious about your perspective on where all this is heading. And if you want to stay ahead of these AI developments as they happen, subscribe and hit that notification bell. This space moves incredibly fast, and I'll be here breaking it down for you every week. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.